Credit card debt, yay! No, credit card debt is bad. And I don't care what you're telling yourself, like, oh, it's fine, I'll deal with it next month, or I'll wait until I get a pay rise, or a tax refund, or a bonus. You need to get out of credit card debt today, if not yesterday. Now, not only is credit card debt just financially stupid, it's actually energetically toxic. Most of us feel when we're in debt, deep down, if you peel back the layers, there are feelings of remorse, feelings of embarrassment, um, shame, and it just drains you of your energy and your resources. So we need to make a plan to get you out of credit card debt ASAP. And this is exactly what this video is going to be all about. And I can pretty much guarantee that most people who are in credit card debt can't even remember half the things that they bought on their card. And I'm going to guesstimate if you're in credit card debt, you've actually been in credit card debt for a while. You just haven't had one bad month. You've had a bad month and then it's kind of snowballed into the next month and the next month and you've never quite got your hand back in control of that debt again. So let's stop that. Let's draw a line in the sand. Let's get you out of credit card debt ASAP and get you out of credit card debt for good. You're going to feel so much better. You're going to feel this weight off your shoulders and it's a really valuable lesson for you to learn. Okay, let's waste no time and we'll get into it immediately. Step one, really easy. Cut the card up. And if you're in multiple credit card debts, you have to cut all the cards up. Now, by doing that, you we've trapped the debt. You can't use the debt, you can't use the card, I should say, and you cannot let the debt get any bigger, assuming that you maintain the interest repayments. So by cutting those cards up, we've trapped it. It cannot get any worse, and we can't use them anymore. So number one most important step, don't forget that. Step two, pay for everything in cash from this point forward. Yes, this is going to be a little bit painful because you're going to have to say no or say that you can't afford to do a few things, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to die. You're actually doing something much more powerful and beneficial for yourself and that you're not getting letting your credit card debt get any bigger, but it's actually going to start getting smaller soon. So pay everything in cash or if you need to use your ATM debit card so that there's no credit at all that you're using. You're going to actually feel quite good in paying for things in cash. You're going to feel a lot lighter and you're going to feel a lot more in control and you're only going to buy what you value and what you appreciate. Step three, start a list. I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to write down everyone that you owe money to and exactly how much. Start with the person that you owe the least amount of money with first, work your way down, and the last person on the list should be the person you owe the most amount of money to. Take that piece of paper, either put it on your bedside table or with your toothbrush or even in your wallet, basically somewhere where you're gonna see that piece of paper a couple of times a day. Now this is really important and I'm going to explain why in a second, how this is going to help you keep focus and motivation. Step four, do a budget. Ugh, most people hate doing budgets. They put them off for as long as possible. But I guarantee you, once you sit down and actually write down all your living expenses, it's actually an incredibly awakening experience because you have a lot more idea and a lot more control over where your money goes and you can see where money's being wasted and where it's not. Also by doing a budget, you can see what you really value and you can then identify things that could potentially be cut out to help either save more money or help you get out of credit card debt faster. Now, if you've never done a budget before, don't even know where to start, find the whole thing completely overwhelming, don't worry, I'm here to help. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Contact me through my uh, website, www.sugarmama.tv. I will then send you a budget template that I use with my other uh, clients and they, they find really helpful. It's something I designed myself and it will make it a lot easier and a lot quicker for you to do a budget. So don't freak out, I'm here to help. Step five, cash flow. Okay, so now we have an idea of exactly how much debt you're in and we also have an idea of your living expenses. We need to get you into a situation where your cash flow, you have not control over your cash flow and so that if a big month comes through where you've got lots of expenses, you don't have to go back to the credit cards to rely on. You actually have cash available to help you stay in control. Now, this is how I want you to run your accounts. I want you to have two accounts. 
One being your everyday bank account, which is where your salary gets deposited and where you pay for your monthly or fortnightly expenses. That might be things like takeaways, um, gym memberships, um, drinks, clothes. Then I want you to have a second account, and this is a, a savings account, which I want you to build up with money that you, for those larger months that come through. You know, say Christmas time, when you've got to buy a dozen Christmas presents for family and friends and you kind of get financially wiped out for the month. What we're going to do is stockpile that account so when those months come, you've actually got enough cash set aside to pay for those things and you're not reaching for the credit cards again to get you through. You pay for that in cash. This will keep you out of debt for good. And this is what I want you to do going forward even when your credit card debt is paid off. Step six, start paying the debt down. The most important and powerful step that you're going to use. What I want you to do is grab your little piece of paper, go through your budget and I want you to work out some really look at each individual expense and really question the value of that expense and whether you really need to do that. The more expenses that you can cut out of your budget, the faster you're going to get out of credit card debt. So go through the budget, look at what each one individually and see which ones you can cull, it's, even if it's just only temporarily. Say for example you identify some savings and you can free up say $300 a month out of your budget. What I want you to do is take that $300 and start using that as lump sum repayments on your debt, starting with the number one debt at the top of your piece of paper. You also need to, which is very important, make sure that you've set up minimum interest repayments on your other credit cards so that if there's, if there's any late fees, um, you don't get any sort of additional fees and fines for not focusing on paying those debts down, but just set them for the time being so that there's minimum debt repayment strategies in place. We will get to them, but we're going to start with the debt at the top of the list, which is the easiest one. So go through the budget, analyze what you can cull, and try and free up some cash flow, which you are then going to channel into reducing that credit card debt. This is really very personal. The, as I said before, the more you can cull, the quicker you're going to get out of debt, and the quicker you can start manifesting savings and building up investments, which is really exciting. Okay, now a lot of you are probably wondering why I'm recommending this strategy of starting with the smallest debt first and the you know going through to the biggest debt last, uh, especially when all the banks say no, you know, um, consolidate the debt or start with the, the loan that's got the highest amount of interest. For what I've learned from experience in coaching people out of debt and working with building wealth is credit card debt as I said, it's very toxic and it's, it's actually quite hard to manage when you've got numerous debts, like juggling a ball. So if I if say you're juggling seven balls, but then I take one ball out of the air and you're only juggling six, it's going to be that little bit easier. So I need to try and help you get those as many balls out of the air as quickly as possible. So by starting with the smallest debt first and focusing on that, we're quickly removing the, re reducing the number of debts and making it easier. We're also building momentum and focus for you so that you actually continue to remain on this strategy and on this path of debt reduction, which is really important. Also, the reason for um, starting with the, the smallest one first is you're going to build momentum. And you're, you know, it's the first one, the smallest debt is going to be the first one off the list and it will then free up your cash flow. So for example, say I was owed $1,000 to the top person on my list and I've been putting $200 in repayments towards that person. The moment that person has, I cross them off the list after I've given them their final payment, I then use that $200 per week that I, or per month that I've been using to pay down that debt and then channel that down to the person, the second person on my list. So, and I continue to use that strategy until I work down the list until I'm completely debt free. Now, the other thing is some financial institutions will say consolidate this debt to a low interest credit card. Yes, mathematically and financially that makes sense on paper, but 9 out of 10 people from my personal experience don't change their habit system. So what happens is they have, say, three credit card debts to various credit card companies. They then amount, consolidate those credit card debts with a new credit card over here and they have a, zero, a one year interest free um, credit card payments where they can, and they transfer all the debt over to the new card. In the meantime, they kind of wander, alts around, not wondering, you know, not not worrying, I should say, thinking, oh no, I've got a year before I start paying interest on that credit card. In the meantime, their habit system hasn't changed. They continue on shopping on the on the original credit cards, and a year's 
time, or one year later I should say, they are in twice as much credit card debt. They haven't made any repayments over here because they just have parked it out of their mind and out of their um, guilt. And they've now been using the credit cards and they've got back up to the same amount of credit card debt. But instead of being in $10,000 credit card debt, they're now in 20. That's why I just don't think that this strategy always works. Now, I'm not saying it won't work for you. If you are very, very strict with money and you are really determined to get out of credit card debt for, you, for good, and you are going to cut up the credit cards and you're going to never get them back, get never get back into debt again, then that is absolutely fine to go and apply for a low interest rate credit card and consolidate. But make sure if you do that, you do not have access to any other credit in the meantime, and you do as much as you can to pay off that credit card debt as fast as possible. Whether it be one month or 12 months, do whatever it takes to get that credit card done and dusted for good so that there's no money owing. The moment you've paid off that that consolidated card, cut it up, cancel it, and never get into credit card debt again. And if that means not having a credit card, well then that's fine, don't have it. Some people just are not um, meant to have credit in their life because it's, it's a dangerous tool. And I'm not saying that credit cards are bad, they definitely are a very, very powerful and very, very helpful tool. And I'll do a separate video on that at another time. But you've really got to respect the gestation period. When I have a client that comes to me that's in heaps of credit card debt and I, co I you know, coach them out of the debt, sometimes it takes a year for them to get out of credit card debt. But I always stress you've got to respect the gestation period. The longer it takes you to get out of credit card debt, the bigger the lesson you needed to learn. And for those clients where it's taken a long time for them to get out of credit card debt, they will swear black and blue that they will never ever use a credit card ever again. And they really feel that they've learned their lesson because they now realize the amazing feeling of freedom and lightness and just control that comes from not having any debt at all. And they really appreciate and value that, that new world that I've opened them up to them. And they've learned a really good lesson and they've learned it early in life. Um, which is great for you as well. So if you're in debt, please make a decision now that you're going to get out of credit, credit card debt and you're going to get out of it starting today. Draw a line in the sand, make some goals and do everything you can for your financial future. So that's it for this video. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, always add the comments in below. Don't forget you can follow me on... Um, uh, Instagram at you sugar mama on Twitter and like us on Facebook. I'll see you in the next video soon. Ciao for now.